Okay, so you have the baby cry I'm falling asleep platformers. You have the middle of the road casual fun platformers. The hard challenging but rewarding platformers. And then you have Celeste. Now, this is a game that was released in early 2018. And I remember playing it but not really caring about it. I liked it but that was about it. I basically completed the whole main campaign and just kind of shoved it away. And believe me when I say this but I hate myself for doing that. Celeste is one of the most exciting, fun and memorable platforming games I've ever played. The fact that this took me 3 years to figure out is a crime, I should be locked up in jail. The whole game is about a girl trying to climb a mountain while facing a bunch of mental problems like depression and anxiety. It is a literal metaphor, you're climbing over your problems just like the mountain. You have a jump, a dash and a wall climb, nothing more and nothing less. And they go absolutely nuts with these 3 moves by introducing a bunch of fun stage gimmicks. You got traffic blocks that move when you step on them, gems that give you extra dashes, void space blocks that you can just zoom through, springs, feathers, wind, clouds, beat swap blocks, whatever this is supposed to be, like a uh, ooga ooga booga. It has so many fun mechanics and each one of them feels so refined and tightly designed that if you make a tier list out of them, most of them won't even go lower than B tier. My favorite are these dash blocks that move when you dash, so what you can do is hang onto one of them, dash into the block and launch yourself to the other side of the room with a huge speed boost. The game keeps building up these crazy chain reactions of challenging platforming. They are hard, don't get me wrong, you will start cursing but they never feel unfair. When you die it always feels like your own fault, like you did something wrong and not the game. Which you know that's really hard to implement, a lot of games make me want to nuke my own controller. Also throughout each level you have these strawberries that act like side challenges disconnected from the main campaign. Some of them are hidden in plain sight but others make you do a bonus bit to get them. And the fun thing about these strawberries is that each one of them is a blast to find and collect. All of them are as good as the main campaign with uh, with one exception but uh, that one doesn't count. Nah, -uh. It would have been cool if it unlocked some kind of outfit or bonus cosmetic if you decide to collect them all instead of a different picture in the end credit. But they are fun challenges nonetheless. Now I know what you might be saying. Hey folks this game looks fun at all, but it doesn't seem extremely hard, it just looks challenging. Well, random viewer that I don't even know and probably will never meet, let me tell you how this game goes from a fun adventure to evil bullshit garbage that wants to kick you in the balls. In each level you have a cassette tape that unlocks a B-side to the corresponding level once you collect them, and these cassette levels don't hold punches, they will just straight up shit on you, not giving you a chance to get up. The first few are fine, they amp up the difficulty difficulty quite a bit but they aren't too difficult. The later ones however raise the heat until you get to B-Side Chapter 8. This is the part where the game shoots you in the face with a green screen quickscope rifle. Do you wanna know what they do huh? Huh? You, you really wanna know? Well they introduce a new mechanic, I'm not even making this up, they introduce a whole new mechanic at the end of the game. Are you insane? Yes. And it's not easy, this is like some Mario 64 speedrun garbage. Eventually you'll learn to get the hang of it, but you need to have some balls to introduce a whole new move in one of your final levels. And you know what? We aren't even done! You also unlock the core when you collect 4 crystal hearts. And if you complete all the B sides, you unlock the C side. And once you complete the core, you unlock chapter 9. <laughs> So if B-Side Chapter 7 is the part where the game kills you, Chapter 9 is where they start to piss on you out of spite. The main campaign took me around 7 hours to complete, alright? This level alone took me 10 hours. Yeah, that's right. 10 hours. Hours. This chapter is straight up evil. There are so many parts where you just say this is impossible and I mean the game even mocks you about it. But completing it feels so goddamn good. This level is the sole reason for its difficulty. It might look intimidating. And it is, but take your time observing the room and try to carve a path forward. Celeste isn't about pixel perfect jumps, but how you can use these three simple moves together to make some crazy chain reactions with the different mechanics the game 
game has to offer. And if this chapter doesn't quench your thirst, you can always go for the golden strawberries, which uh, I, I know I'm insane, but I'm not that insane to beat every level without dying. You are a madman. So I would say, yeah, 10 hours well spent, dumbass. Go get a burger or something. I, I don't care. The best part about Celeste isn't even the crazy platforming or the story on its own, but how they support each other beautifully. It's a game about not giving up, about being determined and not letting your feelings get the best of you. If you have suffered from depression or anxiety no. yourself, you would know that it is a hard thing to get around. You can't just get rid of it, you need to learn to live with it. Shoving it away will only make things worse. Talk to people, let them know how you feel, listen to yourself. I suffered a bit from depression myself in around 2017 and this shit sucks man, honestly. I can't name a worse thing that has overcome me than this. And to see a whole game revolve around it with this high quality writing and gameplay puts a giant smile on my face, it really does. So if you have thrown in the towel with Celeste a while ago, pick up that controller again, don't give up, keep pushing. If there is a part you aren't able to get past, try to tackle it from a different direction. Learn the mechanics, it isn't impossible, you just gotta believe in yourself, which I, I know it's corny, but trust me. This is a hard ass game alright, I'm not sugarcoating that, but with enough practice, you will be able to master it. It kinda reminds me of uh, this piece of garbage. And the thing is, the same lesson applies to depression itself. Don't give up, you will be able to get through it if you take the right steps. You don't have to do it alone, ask friends and family, it's okay. Celeste puts this topic to the foreground in a fantastic manner and not being too pushy about it. There is so much high quality content packed in this 20 quid game that it makes triple A games look like Bobsy 3D, that's not even a joke. And sure, you have like 5 gimmicky parts that are kinda annoying, like stupid strawberry number 123, I hate this one. But these are tiny little bumps in an almost flawless game. There are also a lot of fun hidden easter eggs to be found, like this old school NES version of Celeste hidden away in a vent, and even this stupid little mini game is extremely fun and addicting to play, I'm not even joking. Chapter 9 is also just filled with them, like 20% of the screens have some sort of fun easter egg hidden in them. How did they do this? Like honestly, I'm so impressed. Celeste is just fun, it's so goddamn fun to just zoom through every level, even the harder ones that would just knock you down more than 3000 times. If you haven't checked out this game yet, I'ma punch you in the face, you suck, go make me a bowl of pasta, mm. yummy yummy. So good job guys, you made a phenomenal game, now if you would please like, subscribe and hit the bell because only 62,000 people have notifications turned on on my channel, like well what the hell? Anyways, thanks for watching, join the discord, bye! I'm